Good evening. Uh, my impression in coming here was that we would be dwelling on the issue of human rights. Uh, but I'll be very honest, like most of India, this forum too seems to be introverted uh, and uh, unable to comprehend what's happening around the world. My apologies, Major General. Uh, you represent one of the finest armies that has ever served any country on earth. And uh, coming from a country where generals don't usually sit where you are sitting, they sit over and above everyone else and have devastated the lives of, I would say, hundreds and millions. I think Indians would be better served if they knew how much the Indian Army has suffered at the hands of incompetent, illiterate, intemperate uh, intelligentsia and chattering heads of this country who, while uh, India burns under the threat of annihilation, simply look for vote banks and to get re-elected. If, <laughs> I would have hoped somebody would have told me that SGT was not an abbreviation of Guru Gobind Singh. If I was a student here, I would start a campaign not to call it SGT. I don't like the word tricentian, tricentennial, or S or G. You are worthy students of Guru Gobind Singh, and you've made that into an abbreviation? What about the human rights of Teg Bahadur? or Guru Gobind Singh stabbed in the back by the Mughal army that you tolerated for hundreds of years? Who stood up? You think you have any place in this city for Ranjit Singh? I don't think so. You don't even have a place for Raja Dahir, who was the first one in the 8th century to stop your plunder. But you don't care, you don't want, you're simply too internalized in time frames that are so narrow, so, um, excuse the term, laughable, that today the very people who slaughtered Teg Bahadur are on your doorstep saying Hindustan Murdabad. And the critique comes of the Indian army, not of the murderous mobs that wish to destroy Indian civilization because it is their goal since Ghazwa Hind in the 7th and 8th centuries? I'm, I'm astonished. Today is the anniversary of the international declaration of, let me emphasize, <coughs> universal human rights. And for everyone and his uncle complaining about the problems that some other segment of this society has, I would suggest to you is illiterate about what is universal about human rights. Universal human rights is when the individual is supreme. When your daughter's rights are supreme above everything else, that she's not your property, nor the brother's property, nor the boyfriend's property, nor the husband's, nor the mother-in-law's. And I'm sorry, India has miles to go. You don't even understand the concept of an individual's sacrosanct human rights. You are bound by communities. You went through partition of Punjab and then you partition Punjab again. You do realize what I'm talking about. You first cut this, cut, allowed this country to be slaughtered, just one country. UP was not slaughtered. Punjab was slaughtered. No other place was slaughtered. Karnataka was not slaughtered. What did you do after a couple of years? The great sages, intellectuals of this country, they cut it again. They said the Sikhs will have their state and the Hindus will have arena. So you validated the very people who destroyed you. And there's one army fighting in minus 60 degrees to stop the Uzbek Babar, Tughlaq, and all those Altamushes who 
devastated Nalanda University. And from that day, India went down. You talk of human rights of soldiers or those that the soldiers kill? For goodness sake, 13 million dead in Congo? I don't think anyone over here knows that. Half a million slaughtered in Darfur in 2005? Does anyone know? Does anyone know the name of Humphrey? Does anyone relate to the word Humphrey, or human rights? That's the guy you're observing today. The International Human Rights Day is on today when a Canadian called Peter Humphrey and Eleanor Roosevelt put together the words that hardly any Indian will ever read. And there was one country that opposed it, leaving aside the Soviet bloc, and that was Saudi Arabia. Guess why Saudi Arabia alone voted against the International Convention on Human Rights? They said, under our domain, anyone who changes the religion, which is a fundamental human right, needs to be killed. You can't say that. Because India, since 1947, has learned a lesson never to ever, 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 under any circumstances, deal with the situation with it at hand. What sort of human right threat do you face today? Is ISIS not a bigger threat than 1984? And for 1984, isn't there 1947? When the entire city of Lahore does not have a single Hindu or Sikh living over there, and we've been convinced that dono taraf se hua tha. What are we talking about? This 20% of Delhi's population is Muslim. One side slaughtered, the other side people left. If you can't say that, don't talk about the truth. Don't talk of human rights. Don't talk of anything except becoming CEOs of companies and getting rich. Because that's what you want. And your enemies want to die and you want to live. Lawyer. And in the fight of the gun, no lawyer will win. Are you a lawyer? Yes, he's making a gun. What do you have to do with the 47? You get buried, burnt alive in Bombay, and where do you go to complain? From the people who attacked you. Sir, we took our sofa and took our sofa. Give us our sofa, sir. Tell us, 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 sir. Is this a nation? You attack your army? You bloody Nexerites are farming for a communism in which Venezuela and all exporting countries bankrupt? Let me tell you something. Our first gentleman talked about 1% owning 37% of the wealth, now going up to 58. It's got nothing to do with human rights, by the way. Exactly. Nothing. You want to fight socialism and justice? We'll debate that. But the right of the billionaire is as sacred as the life of the person he exploits. Whether, whether the billionaire is committing a crime comes under the criminal code. If he's committing an economic crime, it comes under the new monetar demonetization nightmare that they're facing. I've never seen people more happy in this country who are standing in lines than ever. The waiters at the hotel where I stay. You want human rights? They are having a dance without money in their pockets because they're seeing these upper middle class pompous little uh, kitty party aunties not attending any more kitty parties. <laughs> it's finished. It's over. <laughs> you need to be aware who your enemy is. The enemy has a nuclear bomb. Your papa might not tell you and even when you're a 14 year old papu, your mom still may feed you with parathas. But you need to wake up because your mom is ignorant and your dad is dumb because in 1947 they cut the arms of India and they said, Chalo changa you hai, dafa hai. <laughs> You have sinned in your national anthem and you don't have sinned in your arms. And you're talking of human rights? What about the human rights of Bacha Khan? Who betrayed him? Who betrayed Balochistan? You! The Indians, because you thought that anybody who speaks Urdu is good and Punjabi, Pashto, these people from hills, 
they don't sit with maulana azad to have a mushaira they don't speak urdu they speak punjabi balochi sindhi and you got duped by the very people who are still here because 90% of them voted for pakistan in delhi in deoband in bareilly in patna in dhaka in madras in bombay where you are, where you elected mohammad ali jinnah not us punjabis didn't elect him you elected him 26 years in a row and then you turned around and said what have we got to do with it what's the name of the smuggler from bombay dau jibran is an indian and i am not an indian <laughs> you got certain italians who are indian but i am not one i am born on the indus my dear you guys have forgotten that you belong to the indus while the up muslim taught you that ganga jamna tehzeeb is some new now kurukshetra that's where we did it that's in punjab you may call it haryana that doesn't change a damn thing you want to stand up for human rights is the day you stand up for yourself this is the day you say like someone asked me mai punjab ta what was the word he said vora bora mai samjha daudi bora keh rahe everyone in india introduces themselves by their caste believe me in pakistan we don't know what the hell they're talking about i'm not exaggerating when bajwa is told you are he didn't even know that bajwa meant coming from a hindu background you are getting pompous in believing you have the best system in the world but you are not implementing human rights in your heart and your soul the human rights of the maid who works in your house but never sits on the dining table is sacrosanct never ever speak of human rights if you've not had dinner with that maid on your table or you've never been to a restaurant while she's holding the little baby and she takes the leftovers back home every day of your life you are lawyers you the intelligentsia if you don't understand what's coming with pakistan's new and 100 million punjabi muslims who think they are arabs which means they are delinquent which means they don't know who they are then you have a serious problem at hand and all you send to the front line are not your sons you send poor biharis poor gurkhas poor marathas not a single middle class man since 1947 has sent his own son in the front line as a soldier think of his right ariel sharon started as a soldier think of the united states bush senior to bush genie either they run away or they serve even prince harry has to serve under some officer here the officer class including major general not his fault the british made the army as such are from the upper middle class or maybe working class that rose there but believe me 100% of the soldier of the indian army is not from the upper middle class nobody sends their son to serve in the front line who are you facing people who go to oxford university and come and blow themselves up in tel aviv people who went to the school of south asian studies and slit the neck of daniel pearl they don't care about caste they don't want to grow up to uh, become ceos or to marry a ceo to have a kitty party all your life for 50 years no they want to destroy you and read up what is ghazwa hind if you can't read it if you don't understand it stop asking rhetorical questions ask honestly sir what the hell is happening and someone or the other will tell you but the problem in india and its human rights is any time you want to talk to a muslim you make sure he's ugly and he has a long beard and wo khade bade bhai ka pajama aur chote bhai ka kurta pehen ke zakir naik type people you talk to them you don't talk to a muslim architect or an engineer <laughs> he's too good looking to look like a muslim look at your own stereotypes and that is destroying you from within how can 20000 people march indian muslims march with hindustan murdabad now you'll say where and suddenly the same indians that you say are indians which is the srinagar muslims you will say ah wo to kashmiri hai it didn't happen then 
It's happening now. Your survival as Indian civilization is at stake. The human rights that you have, whatever you have, will dissipate the day a dirty bomb falls. Because the next day, what is Pakistan will disappear from the surface of earth. But you will have no crops for another few thousand years. Think about it. Keep your eyes open. Respect your armed forces because there are three industries that are world class in India. Bollywood, advertising and the Indian military. Everything else is substandard. Thank you.